welcome to Right With God Ministries. My name is Michael Ryan. And today's topic is, if once saved, always saved is true, then how do people fall from grace? You know, maybe you're somebody who has always believed that once you're saved, God has always, he's always gonna keep your salvation. Your salvation can never be lost. And uh, you're absolutely right by that. We understand that eternal life means exactly that, that, that no one can be taken out. No one can take you out of the Father's hand. And that when you believed in Jesus, John 5, 24, that you've passed from death to life. Okay, you understand that salvation is a work of Jesus. It is by his work that we're saved, not of any righteousness that we have done, Titus 3, but of his work, right? The working of the Holy Spirit. But maybe you've stumbled upon verses like this, and we're going to read it today because this is going to be a, a very important verse in Hebrews 6, verses 4 through 6. But maybe you stumble upon verses that have indicated, and there's others, that you could potentially walk away from the faith. In other words, you can be saved, but then maybe fall away. Maybe you're making choices that you shouldn't be making. Maybe you're just continuing too much in a wrong lifestyle. And we wanna just clarify this with you. So let's jump into Hebrews chapter six, verse four. It's Hebrews chapter six, verse four. And we're gonna start there um, now, you need to understand something about the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is written to Jewish people who have heard the word of the gospel. They've heard the word of faith and they have a choice to make. Okay, they fellowship with Jewish believers. They've known Jewish believers they've had friends, family have been converted. And they're, they're not quite sure about whether they want to accept this new way and let go of the law of Moses, let go of earning heaven through behavior, through conduct. And that's important for you to understand that context. If you look at Hebrews, he's speaking so much about the old covenant and the sacrificial system. And he's trying to show that it was a temporary system because he wants these people to consider um, that what they're believing in is not going to save them and that the, the path of righteousness is Christ. So in Hebrews chapter six, verse four, he says, it's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, verse five, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. They fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of God and put him to open shame, open shame. Now here we see this, this phrase, fall away. And it's not the first time that the Bible uses this, this phrase. Okay, so you may be thinking, okay, well, this there it is right there, brother Mike, fall away, concerned here. Well, Paul uses it too in Galatians chapter five. And in his usage, you're gonna see the explanation and it's important you see it so you can have rightly divide the word of truth and have a strong foundation. He says in Galatians chapter five, verse four, verse three, Galatians five, three. And I testify again to every person who becomes circumcised that they are adepter to keep the whole entire law. Anyone trying to focus on one religious work? You know, maybe you know somebody who's really focused on a religious work, you know, maybe certain music they don't want to listen to, or food that they don't want to eat, or a day they have to worship, or maybe keeping themselves and abstaining for certain things. You know, some people focus on, they the, they say divorce is the biggest sin, or, you know, but they leave out pride, or they, they talk about sexual morality, but they leave out anger. If you want to say that, um, it, it, you know, and he says in, in verse three, if anybody who says, that who becomes circumcised, he's a debtor to keep the whole law. Verse four, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. Nothing wrong with being circumcised. Nothing wrong with finding things that in the Old Testament law, the 10 commandments and following them, nothing wrong with that. But here, when you attempt to justify yourself, when you attempt to make yourself righteous or think that you are righteous because of those things, 
Paul is saying, now you've fallen from grace. Now you've fallen from grace because you have taken grace, which is supposed to be the only way that a person is saved. Grace is God doing the work for you. Romans 5 verse 4 says, bless unto him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. God justifies you, not your own behavior. Does God call us to have godly behavior? Absolutely, but not so that you're justified. And when a person believes and starts to believe and lives as though um, and, and that, that their work is justifying them, when a person truly believes that, then they have not believed the gospel. Well, Mike, we're seeing here in, in verse four, if we go back to Hebrew six, we're seeing that these people were once enlightened. I mean, they tasted the heavenly gifts. It says that they were partakers of the Holy Spirit. They tasted the good word of God and the powers of ages to come. Don't be stumbled by that. Again, the context is not that these people will ever had the Holy Spirit in them. It's not that they had the Holy Spirit in them and the Holy Spirit left them. Because these are people who are listening to the word of God, hearing it preached, even reacting to it, you know, but they don't move forward they don't have the holy spirit and then the holy spirit leaves them because we know from ephesians 1 13 that the holy spirit he seals us her hebrews 1 14 says that he's the guarantee of your inheritance when you have the holy spirit he never leaves you second corinthians 1 21 says and 122 says you have been he has sealed us and given us the holy spirit in our heart as a guarantee god gives people the holy spirit Holy Spirit in their heart as a guarantee, not as a test, not as a test to see how you're going to behave. So these people, as Jesus said in, in Matthew 7, I never knew you. There's never a person who saved once, but then they lose it. You don't become born again and then become unborn again, and then you can become born again again, and then unborn again again. It doesn't work that way. These people are people who heard, maybe even had a reaction okay maybe even said this is really good but they did not believe it now this kind of brings us to a little bit of a quandary doesn't it because we know we understand that salvation is the easiest thing for us jesus did all the heavy lifting for you he says he says come to me all of you who are heavy laden and burdened you know come to me you know my yoke is easy my burden is light you know, he said, give me your yoke. Give me your yoke of trying to be right with God. You know, have you ever felt that yoke in you? You're trying to, you're, you're, you're discouraged. You're trying to do what's right. But the thing that you want to do what's right maybe isn't what's right. You know, you, you feel, you wake up feeling anxious, depressed. You look at some choices that you've made in your life and you carry a heavy burden. A heavy burden. You carry that burden of shame. You carry that burden of guilt. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. Give it to me because now on you have my righteousness. When you believe on me, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he has made him who's known no sin to be sin for us, for you, that you might have the righteousness of God. That is a burden. Well, <clears throat> you know, we have an issue here because salvation is so easy and he takes the burden from us, but yet we have this reality that, that it seems as though people can hear the message and even be exposed to the message, maybe even accept the message to some degree, but then not be saved. And I don't want you to think that this isn't a foreign concept in the scripture. You know, Jesus introduces us to this very concept in the parable of the sower and Matthew 13, Jesus explains to us, knowing that these things are gonna happen, that, and I'm not gonna read it all for you now, but he talks about four different types of hearts. He talks about a heart that does not understand the gospel of grace. They don't understand it and the enemy comes and takes it away. They're exposed to it. The sower goes and spreads the word of God. That may be you. Maybe you're somebody who spreads the word of grace to somebody. Or maybe you're somebody who just heard the word of grace and you're coming here unsure. But the sower just spreads the seed. That's it. They just spread the word. The seed is the message. And there are different hearts. And the first heart Jesus says, here is the message and they don't understand. They don't understand the, the free gift of righteousness. I mean, we live in a world where you have to work for what you get. You know, if you wanna make money, if you wanna go ahead in this world system, you have to work for it. The message of grace is counterintuitive. So people may not understand it rightly. 
and they if the enemy comes and takes it away jesus explains it he says a different the second type of heart are people who hear it and receive it gladly it's good news right amen this is good news you can tell somebody good news and they're like wow that's amazing but they don't quite believe it they may they may respond to it they may think well that's great but they don't quite get it and when trouble in life comes it exposes the fact that they never truly believed it and it just exposes it and jesus teaches that there are people that way you know you've met them maybe there are people who who they always got something going on in their life and it's something negative that takes place they have these catastrophes that are going on maybe they've heard you teach the word of god or maybe they've been to church and heard the gospel but they just they they got so, they're so focused on what what's wrong in their life and what's going on and they, they they just they they divert from hearing the message they're distracted from it they they don't really take this message of grace and believe it and hold on to it which we'll see jesus talks about then we have the third type of heart that is again so caught up in just the deceitfulness of riches he says the cares of this world which you can say is religion religion is very much the cares of this world he talks about riches. It basically is I am the one, I make myself righteous. I provide for myself. You know, I am the one that's the gatekeeper of my life based on how hard I work or how holy I am. These things choke out the message of grace. God who provides everything for us, salvation, provision. He is our provider. He is our father. It chokes out this message and they never quite believe it. But Jesus talks about this fourth heart. And that's the heart that believes it and they understand it and they hold on to it. They hold on to it. And how do you know that somebody's actually believed this message and they haven't departed from it? Well, a simple question is, what do you believe? You see, in the old in the religious system, in the Old Testament system, the evidence of you being in whatever faith is your obedience. But in the system of grace, the evidence is simply what you believe. What do you believe? What how does a person get saved? How did you get saved? What's your testimony? Is your testimony that you did it? Is your testimony that you're trying to be good? Well, then you're not believing the gospel. And 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 if you speak that to somebody and you ask that question, then it's the same issue. But we have to deal with what the scripture is saying here. There are people who are exposed to the message, okay? There are people who are exposed to the message, but they don't quite, uh, they, 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 they don't necessarily stay with it. You know, Jesus had the same issue when he was talking with his disciples in John 15. You know, his all his disciples are there and they're following him. They've been with him, but there's still a possibility they can leave him, right? I mean, other disciples left him. Jesus had the main 12, but he also had other disciples and many of them left. We know that Judas leaves. So he's talking to them and he says something that confuses a lot of people, but we've talked about it in one of our videos. And I can put a link to it below. He says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. You see, Brother Mike, there we go. If anyone doesn't abide, I've got to keep doing something to abide. No, the context is you've been walking with me. I've been doing these miracles. They didn't have a full revelation yet of the, of the crucifixion, of the resurrection. They didn't understand these things, but something really big is about to go down. And he's saying, if you abide in me, if you believe on this word I've spoken to you, Okay, but if you don't believe on this, you're going to wither and you're going to burn. If you don't believe on me as a savior, if you don't believe on me as the one who purges you from all sin, as the one that makes you perfectly righteous for free, as the one who will justify you before God, if you don't believe in me, then you're going to cast, you're going to be cast away. That's all it is. First John says that if whoever abides in Jesus is the person who believes that he is the son of God. James 5.19 talks about this. He says, brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns them back, let them know that he turns a sinner from the error of his way to save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Now, I know there are a lot of people who may have mixed views on James, but the bottom line is this, is that it is possible, this Hebrews deals with the same issue. It is possible for people to be exposed to this message, to walk among us as believers, but never really be of us. They're not believers and their departure is evidence of that. It's evidence of the fact that they've never truly believed, okay? 
that's the su subtle part we have to understand. Jesus prepared us for this in a, in a parable of the sower. You know, we see it in the scriptures. We see the author of Hebrew talking about this. And it's a flagrant because what they've done is they've looked the only way of salvation, Jesus Christ. They've looked it in, his, in its face and they said, you know what? I don't want it. They, they've seen the blood of Jesus Christ. They've heard that message of the blood of Jesus Christ, rather. And they said, you know what? It's not good enough to justify me. I've got to do something else. You know, Hebrews 10, another difficult passage, I think captures this perfectly. Same context in Hebrews is somebody, he's writing to Jews, he's writing to J Jewish people who are contemplating the message of the gospel that they've heard. And he's saying to them, look, I've given you this message that Jesus purges from all sin. I've told you that he's the high priest that you've been worshiping. He's that high, not worshiping, that you've been going to and relying on. He's the perfect high priest. He's the one that makes intercession for you. He's the one that perfectly for, is a perfect sacrifice and makes a sinner perfect. He's the one that makes God he fulfills the promise where God says, I'll remember your sins no more. It's him. But he says in Hebrews 10, verse 26, if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of truth, the sin is unbelief. It's always been that in the God, in the book of Hebrews, unbelief. He says, if we sin willfully after we've received this knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Why? Because if you're following correctly, if you fall, if you say, I do not believe that grace is sufficient, the finished work of Jesus is sufficient to perfectly make me righteous. If you don't believe that, then you've fallen from the message of grace. And what you've done, there's no longer any sacrifice that could ever save you. There's no way that you could possibly be redeemed. It's, it's you're, as Jesus says, you're gonna wither. You just, you did not abide in the truth. You didn't believe it. You didn't, as he says in the parable of the sower, you did not lay hold and believe this. You're on your own at this point. And he continues in Hebrews 10, there's no sacrifice of sin that no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and a fiery ignition which devour all adversaries. You know, if you, if a person believes that they have to write their own ticket to heaven, you can be certain that they're gonna be judged because we're gonna take the law and judge you on the law and nobody can stand against the law. Nobody can be justified by the law. You can't be justified by the law. And God knowing that sent Jesus Christ to take it out the way for you. Do you understand? Jesus Christ and what he has done is the new covenant and you're rejecting it. And in Hebrews 10 verse 28, he continues saying, anyone who rejected Moses' law, the old covenant, they died without mercy. Okay, how much worse punishment do you think will be brought worthy for someone who's trampled the Son of God underfoot? They counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted who? The Spirit of grace. Are you seeing the connection here? Are you seeing how the, it, it's all connected here? Falling from grace, rejecting the Spirit of grace, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. We didn't cover that now. We have a video on that. All of these themes is somebody who's saying, I don't want grace, or I want a little bit of grace, but I also want to justify myself according to the Moses law, the law of Moses, or the law of your Catholic church, or the law of your Baptist church, or the law of your Methodist church, or whatever church you go to. I want both. I want to be justified by grace. I want to be justified by the tenets of my church. And you know what you're doing at that point is you're saying the blood of Jesus Christ, the covenant is not good enough. And it's a worse situation, it actually is. I mean, we're just keeping it real here. This is not one of those messages I'm like, oh man, I want, I, I, I want to be honest with you. Second Peter says this. This is another scripture that people get confused. Well, Mike, look what he says here in Second Peter 2.21. It'd been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than to have known it. In fact, I want to go up a verse on that before I get to it, because this is a very popular verse we deal with online where people get it confused. In 2 Peter 2.20, he says, um, if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. Okay, well, there you go, Mike, right there. These are people who were saved and then became unsaved. No, 
It may sound like that. And listen, I, th this is why you have to be fully cemented on the truth of the gospel that we're saved by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because in that same letter, Peter says, there are certain things in the scriptures that are hard to understand, okay? And, and we have to, there's writing, there's language, but essentially people look at this and say, it's possible for somebody to, um, to be saved and then just come out of it. Just like we read in James, that they, they wander away. No, 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 no. They may be, you see it all the time. They may hang out with Christians. They may be accepting the truth. We've had people in our own groups who come to some of our, our, our who come to our groups, listen to our messages, and be like, "Okay, that seems like it makes sense," and then just totally go opposite on us, totally just change. You know, they heard it. They they were saying it. You know, First John speaks about this that they were among us, but they left us. This is a real phenomenon. Okay, and so. Peter continues, he says, listen, it would have been better, this is verse 21, for them not to know the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away from the holy commandment delivered to them, okay? So the, it's the, we're talking about the way of righteousness. These are people who've perverted the way of righteousness. They've changed the way of righteousness. They've fallen from grace. It's not that they were saved, but they were interacting of it. They had the, they were like the person who received the seed from the sower. And for whatever reason, they never quite believed it. And there was a trigger event, whether it be the enemy stealing it, whether it be a life circumstance, whether it be just a preoccupation with this world and works to be whatever you can be in this world. There was a trigger event and it exposed them as not being sincere believers. That's all it is, not being people who've truly accepted the gospel of grace. Well, if that's so, then here, here's the last question then. Mike, is it possible, is it possible for someone to be a grace believer who've heard the message, believed it, and then got mixed up a little bit. You know, maybe maybe they just had some bad teaching. They were around a lot of religion for a while, you know, and they just, but, but they're saved, you know? Absolutely. I mean, we see Peter wrestle with going out to the Gentiles because his understanding of grace was needing to mature. Okay, we see James in Acts 15. We see that we see uh, believers in Acts 15 who are wrestling with this idea of what do we do with the law of Moses in light of the fact that Jesus is our salvation. Okay, but here's the thing about that is we are not called to discern that in people. You are not called to try to discern that in people. All you can do, and I'm gonna close with these three things. The three things that you can do listening to this message is number one, believe this gospel message for yourself. Do you believe that Jesus Christ handed you his perfect report card and took away your sinful report card? That he died for your past, your present, your future sin, all your sin. That he is the sacrifice. He is the lamb of the world that, that has made you righteous with God forever. Do you believe that? you're saved, you're saved. And even if you struggle, even the Bible says that even when we are faithless, God remains faithful. He will not deny you, his Holy Spirit is in you. Believe that for yourself. Here's the second thing you can do, okay? Teach other people, you know? If anybody's coming to you and they're mixed, they're, they're great, they're mixed with law, they're mixed with grace, just teach them the word of God. Just teach them the true message of the gospel of grace. Explain to them that we're not saved by works, but saved by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Talk to them about the danger of falling away from grace, of thinking that you can be justified by your own behavior. But thirdly, here's the thing, also be sensitive and discerning to brethren that are trying to understand, that need to mature, because it's true. There are people who they believe this message, but they've been sitting under a religious leader for so long and they're confused. Something doesn't feel right to them. Well, be sensitive to that, but you are not called to, to, to tell the difference all the time in terms of what their final destiny is. All we're called to do is believe it for ourselves and share it with other people. That's it. And be aware that people can seemingly believe this and go rogue on you. And if you've been in ministry now, 
and you've been doing this for some time, you'll know that there are people you may be, you may have worked with, you may have labored with you, and they've just left. They've denied the finished work of Jesus Christ. They've denied uh, salvation by way of grace. They've denied everything, okay? And we're not, you're gonna see this. And John said, they came out from among us to expose that they were never really of us. If you have any other questions about this, please feel free to hit us up in the comments, send us a message and we can talk more in detail. And I will plug some other videos for you that will further keep you solidified in this gospel message of grace. God bless you and I'll see you next week. If you enjoyed this video, please like and drop a comment below. For more grace-based Bible teachings, please subscribe to our channel. Please visit us on Facebook and our website at writewithgodministries.com.